Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Wrath of the Lich King and we're going to be looking at professions and how they changed from TBC to Wrath of the Lich King. We're going to go through all primary and secondary professions and we're going to be keeping it at a high level as we go over some of the changes. And we uh, we have a new profession actually here in Wrath of the Lich King called Inscription. Can't wait to go over all this. And by the way, timestamps in the description as always. But we're going to start with the secondary professions. We're going to start with first aid. So we got some new bandages here. Nothing crazy. We've got frost weave bandage and heavy frost weave bandage. Basically, um, you know, you convert your frost weave cloth into these bandages. It helps you level up to max. Nothing really crazy here. The one thing that might be a little tricky is as you are leveling your first aid, you're going to need to get the manual heavy frost weave bandage. The trainer does not train that. And that is a BOP world drop. So, um, Chances are you'll get it just by leveling, but if you don't, you're going to have to farm it yourself. Uh, for, what can I say about first aid? I mean, it's great. Everyone should get it. Uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, we're showing which classes that should learn it. Pretty much every class, it's great for healing yourself very fast uh, when you're out of combat. Um, it's fantastic. All right, let's move on and talk a little bit about fishing. Fishing has so much stuff added to it in Wrath of the Lich King. It's crazy. You've got the Kaloak Fishing Derby. You've got um, rare pets. Um, you know, there's tons of fishing dailies. I mean, the sea turtle, by the way, I got the sea turtle without even trying back in Wrath of the Lich King. I remember it was like Christmas Eve or something, and I... I literally, I was joking with my friend. He cast a volley on the water and I was like, I got to save the fish, you know, like a hunter volley shot. Right. And, um, I just cast one, one time out of nowhere in Sholazar base and pulled up the sea turtle. Your character glows from the achievement. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, it was the craziest thing ever. I love achievements, by the way. Can't wait for wrath of the Lich King. So we know about the sea turtle, the giant sewer rat, but what else can you get? Well, Tons of fish, you know, you can get these buff foods from like the dragon fin fillet, spiced, uh, spicy fried herring, uh, gigantic feast, fish feast, uh, there's tons to do. Um, Ma Grandmaster trainer, trainer Marcia Chase uh, is going to give you your fishing dailies here in Wrath of the Lich King. She's uh, right by the fountain in Dalaran. There's five potential daily quests that will take place in Northrend. You will also get bag of fishing treasures the northrend version for completing those dailies uh and they're pretty awesome you can get tons of good stuff from there things like you know fishing poles fishing hats you can get lock boxes you can get um rings you can get uh, gems of course lots of junk um and then of course the Kaloak fishing derby um this is uh this begins when elder Clearwater who is by the fountain in Dalaran right before uh, the event starts, makes the uh, announcement that the contest to see who can bring him uh, a black tip shark uh, will begin. If you're the first player to do this, you'll have a choice between an heirloom item called the Dread Pirate Ring or Boots of the Bay, which is uh, plus 15 to fishing, and you can actually uh, teleport to Booty Bay with those. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty worthwhile thing, just like the uh, Stranglethorn Vale Fishing Extravaganza. Uh, again, that happens Saturday, the uh, Kaloak Fishing Derby from 1400 to 1500 server time. Um, and yeah, there's a ton of crazy good stuff, uh, as always, from fishing. Tons of stuff. So definitely a worthwhile profession here in Wrath of the Lich King. Now let's move on to cooking. I actually like cooking a lot. Uh, of course, the well-fed buffs are wonderful, but there's not too much to say here. I would say the biggest change is that there are feasts, things like the fish feast. It uh, allows multiple players to eat at once, so you just kind of like plop it down on the ground, and everyone just right-clicks and starts eating. Um, and it, and always, as always, cooking goes hand-in-hand hand with fishing, so if you're going to get fishing, might as well just level up cooking along the way. Um, and yeah, there's lots of new uh, cooking recipes and fishing in fish in Wrath of the Lich King. All right, let's move on away from the secondary professions and start talking about some primary ones. Mining is uh, amazing. It's great for gold making. Reagents uh, are provided for blacksmithing, engineering, and jewel crafting. But you also get extra stamina passively, uh, 60 stamina buff uh, when you're maxed, uh, which makes the profession not entirely worthless when you're sort of min-maxing out your character. You, uh, usually you just put mining on like a farming alt and then drop it when you no longer need the mats. But um, yeah, so there's cobalt is a new uh, type of ore and bar, saronite, same. You can also get titanium bars, titan steel bars. These are all going to be used to create uh, things for other professions. And of course, anyone can learn it. Um, anyone, you know, would 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 
be fine getting it because it's a gathering profession um but yeah nothing too crazy here with mining besides the new ores and stuff and that new passive and then blacksmithing has some pretty cool stuff actually now in tbc uh blacksmithing was kind of uh, a really good thing to get for like rogues and shamans because there's some crazy good weapons i would say it's not uh the same in wrath of the lich king like i think plate wearers are, are pretty pretty much the main benefactors here um, socket gloves and socket bracers are two new uh, things that have been added to blacksmithing so this actually makes it viable for any class if they're going after those sockets um, so yeah that's that's pretty powerful of course getting those extra gems and you have to keep the profession in order to get these bonuses so keep that in mind um, frozen orb drops from dungeons uh, this is kind of similar to like other crafting mats like nether vortex or uh, primal nether uh, basically frozen orbs are going to be used to create gear uh, for all professions but definitely for blacksmithing um, there's also going to be some epic armor that you can craft which will require runed orbs which drop in ulduar uh, and crusader orbs which drop in toc again very similar to like nether vortexes um, and these are actually boe if you look at the titanium razor plate here this is a bind on equip so you don't have to be blacksmithing to benefit from some of this stuff uh, or you can be blacksmith and just yeah sell it on the auction house to, uh, to make some gold so that's kind of cool um, the eternal uh, belt buckle is kind of cool you can also add a socket to your belt um, as well so yeah blacksmithing uh, some nice utility there and some good gold making opportunities as well Let's move on to Inscription. So Inscription is the new profession and it brings a lot. Um, well, to you know, to explain it simply, Inscriptionists create glyphs. They, uh, they're basically things that, you are, that are bound to your character. It's like enchanting your character, right? Uh, there's major and minor categories. Uh, you can change them at any time you want. Glyphs are not BOP, so you can trade them. And that is a great source of gold for uh, inscriptions. Um, minor glyphs typically are cosmetic things like changing how polymorph looks or adding more types of undead creatures to your army of the dead or just changing how your ghoul looks, for example. Well, a major glyph... Uh, would be something significant and typically each class will have a major cookie or will have a cookie cutter best you know major glyph uh thing to go for for both pve and pvp and they'll probably be different um so major glyphs are kind of like almost like as powerful as t choosing the right talents yeah, choosing the right major glyphs uh, is very similar uh, there are also shoulder inscriptions that are inscriptionist only which makes the profession very good for any class um, i put you know, basically anyone who uh, is a spellcaster or could be a spellcaster being being classes that should learn it. And that's mainly because they create offhands, tomes, uh, which is kind of cool, like tome of whatever. And it's a cool spellcaster offhand. Um, and, and, and so uh, these inscriptionist only things um, are things like master's inscription of the pinnacle. You can see here permanently add 60 dodge rating and 15 defense rating to shoulder armor. These inscriptions are better than any other enchant you can get in the game. Um, so, for example, uh, you can get uh, the Sons of Hodir reputation exalted, and that'll give you a shoulder enchant. Well, the Master's Inscription of the Storm or Master Inscription of the Crag will be a 46 spell power increase over that enchant. And so this typically holds true for a lot of the professions. Um, the value that you're getting from these professions is about equal. For example, what you get from jewel crafting or alchemy will be roughly the same as what you get from inscription. Roughly speaking, it's not exact. It's, it's in the same realm, though. None is, like, super overpowered. Inscription also allows the creation of Dark Moon cards, such as this powerful one here called Dark Moon Card Death. Uh, pretty amazing. So you make card by card, and you put the deck together. Um, and, of course, it's actually... Um, and it's tied with herbalism. I don't know why I wrote down best combined with mining. That's, that's a typo. Um, but you need uh, herbs in order to mill. And milling is kind of like prospecting in a way. You get it with inscription. And it, what it does is it extracts the pigments from herbs to create ink used in all sorts of your inscription. So this means, of course, that uh, you will want to go herbalism, most likely, if you're going inscription as well. Unless you have tons and tons of gold to buy all of your herbs. A very, very cool and exciting new profession. That's very good. All right, let's talk a little bit about engineering. 
Um, engineering has always been, in my opinion, one of the most fun professions of all time. In Wrath of the Lich King, they just went bananas with it and made it even better. You've got like the things like the hyperspeed accelerators. This is a use effect that grants you increased haste. So, for example, you pop Divine Plea, and that'll lessen the downside of it and give you that mana back faster. Uh, other useful tools are things like Nitro Boosts. Uh, it'll give you uh, some additional uh, critical strike rating, give you some increased run speed so you can get around faster. Pretty amazing. Also, if you use a Mana Potion Injector or a healing potion injector engineers will get 25 percent more out of those runic mana and healing potions used inside of that injector there's also the amazing pvp utility uh hand mounted pyro rocket for those of you uh who were pvping back in the day i'm sure that uh just brings you back uh pretty much um everyone would go engineering for this i mean this is just a very nice 45 second cooldown um rocket that you launch it's helpful for getting kills in arena of course you have to be an engineer for that one um, but there's a ton more. There's the uh, Flex Weave Underlay, which is basically a parachute slow fall. The belt clipped spinoculars. Basically, you throw a grenade off your belt every minute. Pretty amazing. There's the Personal Electromagnetic Pulse Generator, which actually does an AoE uh, confuse on nearby mechanical mobs. There's also the Noise Machine, which is a once-a-minute shield proc on getting hit. Sonic Booster, which gives you a chance on melee hit to increase your attack power. Tons of really good epics like Armored Titanium Goggles, Charged Titanium Specs. As you can see, it's kind of similar to TBC. You got those helms. Uh, there's also Moly, or Molly. I think it's called Molly. It's a, basically a mailbox you can summon. has a two-hour cooldown. Uh, portable mailbox, pretty cool. There's the Gnomish X-Ray Specs. See everyone without armor or clothes. I remember back in the day, everyone was crazy about those. Uh, what I think is some of the coolest ones is actually a wormhole gadget sand. Allows you to create a portal to gadget sand for your party. That's amazing. And then the scrap bot construction kit. Basically a repair bot. So all the goodies at, that you know and more. Engineering uh, got tons of good stuff in Wrath of the Lich King. Um, so uh, very, very awesome. And a lot of this stuff is engineer only that I went through. As, as you can see on these pictures, these are all engineering only. So um, of course there's more than just the engineering only stuff, but just going over that it's like amazing how much engineers get for going engineering okay let's move on to jewel crafting this one's pretty straightforward uh very similar to the burning crusade you can create jewel crafting only gems there's actually 18 of them i'm showing you three right here um there's about a 25 percent increase uh uh versus the non jewel crafting equivalent uh, other than that, of course, they have new prospecting. There's new ores to prospect in Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, so absolutely another, uh, still a good money-making profession. But other than that, jewel crafting uh, is pretty much uh, very similar to how it was in The Burning Crusade. Okay, let's talk about herbalism. So of course, uh, best combined with alchemy and or inscription. I guess, I guess you can't do... Uh, no, 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 that makes sense. Um, so yeah, herbalism, there's new herbs, lich bloom, ice thorn, gold clover, frost lotus. Uh, you also get a passive called lifeblood. This is a non-GCD uh, self-heal for 3,600. This is actually um, increased based on your maximum health. So keep that in mind. It's kind of decent if maybe you're like a bear tank, right? Uh, you're a druid, you can uh, mine these nodes really quickly and then have that lifeblood talent uh, pretty nice. You can use it while stealth or invisible. Um, so pretty good, pretty good little passive there. Um, and yeah, it's as a bonus, it's needed for your inscription. So I would say it's going to be in very high demand come Wrath of the Lich King, uh, all those herbs. It's, and yeah, good for anyone to, to get this gathering profession. Moving on to alchemy. There's some really crazy stuff. Um, of course, if you go mixology, you're going to get an increased effect and duration when you drink any elixir or flask. Um, increased effect typically scales to about you know, for example, 46 additional spell power. Again, keeping in line with the other professions. Uh, of course, depending on what flask you use, it might be 20 intellect or 20 MP5. Um, and of course, you're going to get that double duration. So instead of lasting one hour, it's going to last two hours. Uh, of course, you also get some other nice things like the endless mana potion uh, and the uh, crazy alchemist's potion, um, which is actually uh, the same uh, in terms of the like runic mana potion. Uh, however, you also are going to get that random effect. Um, you also have the ability to make uh, uncut epic gems. So, of course, alchemy has another money-making avenue. Uh, and you can also use um, Flask of the North uh, if you want to not use a normal flask. Uh, 
So this one is alchemy only, uh, going to be a money saver instead of having to use up those non-alchemy only flasks. So yeah, alchemy's got some really great stuff. And of course, there's all different types of uh, alchemist stones, uh, very nice trinkets. So there's the mercurial one shown here, but there's also one with attack power as a tanking one. Uh, so those alchemist stones are also very nice trinkets. All right, let's move on to skinning. So the passive bonus for skinning is called Master of Anatomy. Skinning all those dead animals has brought in your anatomical knowledge, increasing your critical strike rating by 40. This also um, is very helpful for DPS classes. You're going to uh, have some new uh, furs and leathers in um, Northrend. You got Arctic fur, heavy Borean leather, and then regular Borean leather. These actually can be traded in uh, to Brag Stout Bard, Stout Beard in Dalaran, and he will give you epic leatherworking patterns. So it definitely makes sense to pair skinning with leatherworking, unless you're uh, getting skinning uh, purely for uh, selling the leathers. Uh, but other than that, I mean, skinning is pretty straightforward other than that additional new passive in Wrath of the Lich King. Now, leatherworking has some cool new additions. Uh, these are leatherworking only um, sort of fur linings. <laughs> so there's fur lining spell power, which gives you some uh, increased 46 increased spell power again, right around that avenue 46, 47, right? Um, and then you've got fur lining attack power, fur lining frost resist, nature resist, shadow arcane, all of them pretty much. There's also fur lining stamina for an extra 74 stamina. So technically, any class could go leatherworking, but again, I think the classes that benefit it from the most are ones who wear leather and mail, so classes like the Rogue, Hunter, Druid, or Shaman, but um, anyone can benefit from these fur lining uh, little uh, add-ons. Okay, let's move on to tailoring. So, so surprisingly, tailoring got a flying mount, an epic flying mount, the magnificent flying carpet. If you remember people flying around on those, um, of course, you have to be a tailor to uh, use this. Um, it's a very fast rug. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. Um, the dark glow embroidery uh, will give you a chance to restore 400 mana when you cast a spell. That's pretty awesome. Um, you can also get like the light weave embroidery. This gives you uh, 73 spell power. Um, so that's one's kind of cool as well. Uh, it's a chance on spell cast. Um, there, there's a bunch of different embroideries here, and these are only for tailors. Um, these different embroideries so um, nice little benefits on top of the mount but other than the embroideries the dark glow light weave and sword guard embroideries in the mount that is the only tailoring specific thing and of course tailoring always has you know materials cloths that they can sell and make some good money here Moving on to enchanting, we have uh, basically just ring enchants. Those are the only new things. There's uh, enchant ring assault, enchant ring greater spell power, and enchant ring stamina. Uh, those are the three. Uh, other than that, uh, of course, there's just new enchants. Enchanting will always be in demand. Everyone needs to enchant their gear, right? It's typically paired with tailoring, so classes that typically go with this are priests, warlocks, and mages course uh, anyone can go this but i typically it's paired with tailoring and those three classes benefit from tailoring uh, i feel like the most of course you have disenchanting which is that nice utility but um, overall enchanting a pretty good profession all right well that's all the professions we just wanted to do a quick overview there's so much more to talk about with each of these so a future guide uh, that goes in more detail with each of these professions will be coming on the horizon so if you liked it this guide then uh, don't forget to subscribe to see more uh, if you have any questions or comments please feel free to ask or comment below my name is toy house i hope you learned something from this guide and i'll see you in the next video take care